It's common knowledge by now that I've been working closely with THQ Nordic and Purple Lamp Studios to help bring the hype for Battle for Bikini Bottom Rehydrated, and engage the community to help give feedback for making this a truly faithful experience. That said, I've been given early access to the full game, and have been given permission to show you gameplay from Spongebob's Dream for your quenching before the rehydration. So let's talk about what we have to see here. And an important side note, there's a huge polishing patch rolling out on the day of release. So many of these fine details you see here are most likely not final. For this reason, I won't be nitpicking the game in this video, however I will also not ignore parts of the game that I feel are unfinished. Just remember though, the day one patch will most likely address those things. Down the road, however, I do plan on creating a full, detailed, and critical review comparing the ups and downs between both the original and rehydrated versions. I have nearly 9,000 hours of experience playing the original game at this point, and have insight on the development of both that version and this one. This one, fortunately, with some first-hand experience, as you guys already know. So subscribe and enable notifications to hear about when that one's up. It'll take a while to create since I want to cover all the bases and then some, but it'll be worth the wait. In this video, I'll be hopping around sections of this level to meet my talking points. And from here, here onward, I'll be referencing the original game as Battle for Bikini Bottom or BFBB, and the remake as simply Rehydrated. To start, the term on everyone's mind is movement. Has it improved since I playtested the game in October? Absolutely. Is it perfect? No, it's not. The movement in this game does not hold the flame to the original versions, but as expected. Battle for Bikini Bottom has some of the smoothest and most fluid movement out of any game I've ever played. It's one of the things that made me take interest in speedrunning the game in the first place. But this is not to say that Rehydrated's movement is bad. It's improved leaps and bounds since the first Gamescom demonstration, and I'm glad they took into consideration my suggestion to increase the air friction. It makes the platforming far better controlled and much more enjoyable. I certainly did not have any difficulty navigating Squidward's Dream, which is a Again, one of the hardest levels in the game for platforming. And an important side note, I'm happy they went through with my suggestion to not increase the difficulty here by making the notes larger. They were originally planning on doing that, but I made my point that the players can just skip the spatula and select another if they don't want to do it. So it seems like they agreed, so once again, thank you Purple Lamp. Battle for Bikini Bottom was an action adventure platformer, so the movement lends hand in hand with the combat. Thankfully the dream level has several areas that lend themselves well to judging these crucial aspects of the game. So in short, the combat of Rehydrated is quite a bit faster paced than that of BFBB. The moves feel heavier and most of the animations go by zippier, which I believe lends itself well to the game's heavier platforming movement in comparison to the original. After all, most platforming games go with a heavier approach just to keep the movement challenges, well, more challenging. Battle for Bikini Bottom struck a beautiful balance between underwater floatiness and movement responsiveness, while also keeping the game somewhat challenging on a casual level. The game is unique and trying to emulate something unique and flawless exactly will ultimately lead to disappointment. The alternative, however, is trying something new. The heavier movement in Rehydrated sets itself apart from BFBB, while also appealing to the community's wishes to speed up the combat to make it more exciting. When you play the remake for yourself, you'll also see that in the Robo Sandy fight as well. I was one of the many who believed that Battle for Bikini Bottom wasn't in need of a remake, because its movement, frame rate, and art style had not aged a single day. But what I hadn't considered was the potential to play a new spin on the game's base mechanics. To the untrained eye, sure, they look very similar. They respect the original game's direction, however, Purple Lamp put their own variations on it. And similarly, this is where we get to the art style discussion. In short, they delivered. These level environments look fantastic, the color palette is beautiful, and the lighting and shadows are done quite nicely. On the PlayStation 2 and GameCube versions, the lighting was in need of a massive update, so there's another justification for rehydrating this game. Though the Xbox version still looks beautiful to this day, it's not the one that most people played. But what about the style? Like I said, this aspect of the original has not aged a single day. It's fine wine, and extremely nostalgic of the late 90s and early 2000s painted cell days of cartoons. It's like watching an old school episode of Spongebob on a CRT. So what did Purple Lamp decide to do? Instead of trying to contest the original style, they decided to do their own. They took the realistic approach much like you'll see in the newer Spongebob CGI movies. After all, Spongebob has changed a lot over the past 17 years, and in my opinion, this is Purple Lamp's area of expertise. If you bought this game to see all of your old favorite levels in a new spectacular way, you are absolutely getting your money's worth here. Rehydrated is eye candy. Even with BFBB's art style still looking great to this day, 17 years later, Rehydrated puts a different spin and perspective on it that lends itself well to the potential of in-game graphics in 2020. It makes full use of what's possible 17 years later, even while still having to stay portable to three consoles including the Switch, which is notorious for limiting the potential of multi-platform games. 
The one thing I take issue with here is that the sizes of the supporting cast are strangely small in some cases. For example, Larry, who isn't as much of a chad as he was in the original. But other than that, I can't give higher praise for how the environments look in this game. And the earlier levels look absolutely amazing too, you just gotta wait to see them for yourself. Simply put, amazing job. This is one of the highlights of my experience playing and what I believe most people wanted out of this project. Now I will say however that navigating these environments is not flawless. Again, that day one patch will probably cover most of these, but I want to briefly cover the animations to clearly establish I'm not ignoring their flaws. Sandy's double jump animation after leaving a swinger appears to be either missing or just doesn't animate unless you've waited a certain amount of time before releasing the lasso. I've noticed this issue with trampolines as well, for you can see that I'm trying to jump to interrupt my bounce, and while it still makes the jumping noise, Spongebob just keeps rocketing into the air. On top of this, you can only control your camera before and after you jump on the trampoline. I figured this out the hard way after struggling to do the super bounce challenge for a bit, but yeah, you have to turn the camera before jumping onto the trampoline if you want to be able to see where you're landing. Perhaps this is an oversight on the game's manual camera control option, which I do use and prefer over auto-turning. And for one final criticism, the scripted trampoline momentum still feels rigid and forced, along with their camera movements, but they've very much improved since the last time I played the game. Now I don't think anybody was expecting Rehydrated to contest the flawless platforming animations of the original BFBB, but hopefully some some of these more glaring issues are ironed out. Now that we've gotten the criticisms out of the way, let's get on with the praise, because there's a lot of it. Purple Lamp Studios made a huge point to bring more life to the dialogue of the characters by adding more emotions to their talking animations. This is one of the things they spoke to me about during my visit, and they've gone on record saying it multiple times as well, as have THQ Nordic. Compared to BFBB, Rehydrated has more talking variations, and newly here, they transition mid-sentence, in sync to what they're saying. For example, Spongebob will be talking and raise his hand mid-sentence to make his point. Bring myself up a mustache! Yes, Gary, I'll be careful. And like I said, they're far more expressive and fitting for the voice actor's deliveries. Where Battle for Bikini Bottom plays focus on platforming animation, this game focuses on the dialogue. Paired with the original game's witty writing and fantastic line delivery from most of the original Spongebob cast, the new dialogue and animations are an incredible addition that I am very much attached to now. The dialogue in Patrick's Dream even has special care, having him actually hold the golden spatula as he's talking about holding it. I will note, however, that this type of thing is standard for game development in 2020, but if the point of this project was to rehydrate and preserve the original work, this is a huge step up from BFBB's casual experience. Having several standard types of dialogue and animation to flip through stays true to the original methods used in BFBB, while the increased expressiveness of them elevates this to a whole new level. This along with its environments are where rehydrated truly shines. And let's be clear, I'm sure some of the platforming animation bugs I brought up earlier will be fixed with patches and updates. If not, the first major one we're receiving on day one. It's 2020, and thankfully we have those capabilities now. THQ Nordic and Purple Lamp have been very attentive to the community's concerns in the past, as I discussed in my short video about Sandy's Dream a while back. It's also admirable that Purple Lamp was even able to finish the game on time amidst the world circumstances, especially since their location was severely stricken with the disease and during the polishing phase of development too. Throughout all this, they were still able to consistently respond to the community's concerns and high standards, showing visible improvement with later gameplay trailers and demonstrations. And with that big patch coming up on day one, I'm excited to see how Purple Lamp and THQ Nordic have exceeded our expectations once again. Personally, I'm most excited about the next generation growing up and enjoying this game just as we did, and for our community to reach greater heights than ever before. But what are your thoughts? Do you think I was fair with my analysis? Whether or not you have a comment or thought to share, I hope you all enjoy this game to the fullest extent. I'll be streaming it on my Twitch channel tomorrow, June 22nd, starting at 11am Eastern Time, and going all day long. On the menu, we have a 100% casual playthrough, routing and strategy development, and speedruns of Rehydrated. Then we're going to finish off with speedruns of the original BFBB, and for the foreseeable future, I'll be streaming both speedruns of Rehydrated and the original. That's the plan. See you all there, and if you want to be filled in on the history of our passionate community in the meantime, I highly recommend checking out my documentary series on the original game. I've poured my heart and soul into that series, and if you're looking for more BFBB content, I highly recommend giving that one a go. But to wrap this up, thanks for watching everybody, and let's get ready for a very memorable summer.